Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday. It is the Earth Master out here, 917 a.m. That's California time, January 28th, 2025. Latest activity here uh, looks like some movement across Yellowstone, a little spike of an earthquake there. A couple showing up on that seismograph station. Uh, and far as the uh, latest quake here on the globe, shows a 3.0 across the area of the uh, Indonesia Islands region. Seen quite a bit of clustering going on there today. Uh, back here across New Zealand, 5.1 earthquake uh, shaking things up. Let's go down here and check it out. Uh, this earthquake originally coming in, uh, well, yeah, 5.1, about 2 o'clock in the morning. That uh, definitely starting to get a lot more active out here across the plate boundary. Uh, and, of course, if you look inland away from the plate boundary, a 4.9 coming in just uh, prior to the 5.1. But this is away from the plate boundary, indicative of the strain out here against New Zealand. And uh, it's been kicking up here. Last night, uh, late last night, 5.8 up along the Kermadec Trench with adjustment and strain showing across this plate boundary now. This area, of course, has a, a number of fault systems and, of course, a major subduction zone boundary known as the Hikurangi Subduction Zone. That uh, area can easily see a mega quake out here. And it's been uh, it's been showing some signs of elevated activity out here recently. Don't see it a lot here on the USGS map, but uh, during a lot of last year, there was a lot of deeper earthquake activity underneath neath this region with some surface adjustment taking place there across the Hikurangi. Of course, uh, you know, anything at any time can take place here. But this is a key indicator of the strain uh, that's building out here across the New Zealand region with that earthquake being away from the area. Uh, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, let me go over and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick, see what we have on the uh, New Zealand stations. Uh, GeoNet reporting this as a 5.3 strong earthquake. 23,000 people reported failing this earthquake. Fairly shallow as well, about 35 kilometers into the uh, area. And uh, it is pretty close to the Wellington region. Quite a bit of uh, strong shaking being reported from that earthquake uh, that struck at uh, local time, 11.26 p.m. Now they're on a Wednesday time period. Living in the future. We're still living in the past here. Uh, let's take a look at the um, earthquake drums out here, which I'm sure that five-pointer showed up quite nicely as indicative there. There looks like there was a couple earthquakes um, around that time period when the 5.3 struck there across North Island. A number of earthquakes there in the main shadow. Uh, but it did show up across the majority of the seismograph stations, even down there across South Island area. Let's see, 2.4, 2.6, a couple other smaller quakes in there. But uh, yeah, it almost looks like there was a number of earthquakes out there in between, uh, or at least around the time period of that 5.3. So there may have been some out in the background along with that five-pointer. Really not seeing it, though. 4.3 up along the Kermadec Trench. Just uh, looks like a minute before, or a couple minutes before the 5.3. So that may have been uh, what we were seeing here. And that 5.7, they, they actually have that as a 5.7 across the area. That uh, one oddball earthquake that I just showed you guys, they're reporting that as a 5.7 out here. So that's rather interesting. Uh, if that's the case, some larger activity. Uh, either way, there's a lot of strain out here across the uh, New Zealand region, and they can see some big earthquakes. The Hikurangi, of course, has not seen uh, any major rupture out here in uh, quite a few hundreds of years. Alpine Fault down here looking at a big one as well. Uh, so just be on guard. New Zealand definitely showing the um, uptick out here today. I do have a seismograph station down there called uh, the New Zealand Station right here, but nothing showing up on it right now. But uh, definitely keep an eye on that region as we're seeing elevated seismic activity increase there. Uh, across the Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet, not a whole lot going on. Up here in northwestern Nevada, 2.4 here in the last 20 minutes or so. Uh, Northern California earthquake activity limited to yesterday. So I don't know if they re turned off the uh, reporting of the smaller quakes out there across Petrolia or not. I haven't really been watching this 
uh, all morning, but uh, nothing showing up there on the USGS map for now. San Francisco area, pretty quiet. A little clustering going on here across the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, indicative that the plate is on, or the uh, plates are on the move here. But the majority of these from yesterday, not a whole lot showing up there uh, for today's time period. A little bit less active down here across Southern California as well. Um, one earthquake out there around Mina, Nevada, 2.7, about 3 o'clock this morning. So looks like a little breakout here across the West Coast for now. A lot of adjustment taking place south here across New Zealand area. Um, not a whole lot happening out there across the rest of the country uh, as well. Pretty small earthquake activity. Uh, I do want to double check Yellowstone out here, see what we have for the latest data. And there's uh, <clears throat> not a whole lot happening out here. Got one earthquake there showing up. I believe that was that spike that we just checked out there on the graph, uh, which is back over here now. A little small spike of an earthquake, but that's really uh, that's really about it. Really nothing big going on across the area as far as any elevated earthquake activity. This is uh, some type of uh, outside interference, whether it's wind or snow or ice. Doesn't look like it's earthquake activity. Could very well be uh, snow or ice up there. We'll check out the weather here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, nothing going on across the New Madrid seismic zone for now. Pretty quiet out there. One earthquake out in uh, Reno, Ohio last night. Nothing else to report out here across the eastern portion of the country after yesterday's uh, main earthquake. Down here across the South America area, increasing earthquake activity as well. It seems to come in patterns here as uh, things amplify up here south of the equator area. Things are uh, pretty active today. A lot of uh, divergent boundary activity in the fracture boundaries yesterday down here. And that is showing. Uh, in fact, about an hour following this activity, we've seen elevated activity across the Peru Chile Trench, where most of the strain and pressure tends to transfer from uh, during these type of earthquakes offshore here uh, and today no exception we're seeing increasing activity there across South America with a pretty good clustering going on here with the latest quake of 4.9 68 miles here deep into the uh, underneath the Argentina region things starting to amplify there middle America trench pretty active as well up here but really nothing major going on um, Alaska, got a four-pointer up there along the Aleutian Trench. Somewhat active here in the last few days across that region. Uh, not so much here across the western, extreme western edge of the Aleutian Trench, but I'm sure that will fill in. Uh, but today, 4.1. Nothing big going on up there across Alaska for now. Got uh, one earthquake out here across the Japan region. 4.7 just off the coast of Russia there. Not really uh, seeing too much activity out there today. Doesn't mean we won't see anything, but uh, it's pretty quiet there in the last 24 hours across the uh, Japan region with most of the clustering and crunching going on across New Zealand area. Let's check out Iceland here real quick, see what we have for the latest data. Um, do -do -do right here. Uh, a lot of earthquake activity out here. That was just a little bit too glitchy. Um, a lot of it around the uh, Savart Singhi region, upwards across this rift boundary. Decent clustering going on here across this region. I think there's some type of geothermal plants out here, if I remember. I don't know why this is being glitchy like that. It's weird. Um, but uh, overall pattern out here across the rift boundaries are increasing in terms of earthquake activity. And, of course, that could uh, amplify the volcanoes out there. The Savart Singhi uh, GPS monitoring data stations here show uh, a steady rise since the end of the eruption there last year, end of last year. Uh, I don't know exactly when was that. Sometime in November, if I remember right. Uh, but we're going up. This is a vertical displacement indicative of magma. Um you know, pressurizing underneath the area. So we'll see an eruption back across the region there soon, I'm sure. As uh, far as Hawaii goes, uh, last time I checked, I, I got a notification there last night that they resumed the uh, eruption. 
This is put out uh, 128, that is UTC time. Lava fountains of 80 to 120 feet high continue from both the north and south vents within the crater area this morning. That's going to be uh, Hawaii time. Um, so let's go see what we got there across the Kilauea volcano on the Big Island. Oh, yeah. Got full-blown eruption going on there from two of those uh, vents filling up the uh, area. Uh, the last, this is, I believe, episode number seven since the return of the eruption out here across this, uh, the Kilauea Volcano, episode seven. Um, yeah, the last, <laughs> here's a good average here. Each episode of lava fountaining since December 23rd has continued for about 13 hours to eight days, and episodes have been separated by pauses in eruptive activity due to, well, you know, you got to have a little bit of magma accumulation to create these episodes. Uh, based on the past episodes here, episode 7 will probably last 10 to 20 hours. So we'll have to check back on that. And, of course, the inflation chart gives us a, uh, a good key indicator of what's going on there. This is the summit region. Here's our most recent eruption. Of course, we're going to go down, right? If this thing started to go up while the eruption was happening, then we'd be looking at something bigger about ready to take place. But we're going down, and this has been the trend. Eruption, pause. E um, looks like there was a little bit of eruption, a little pause. Here's a notable eruption ending, and then we got that pause, and then it's just a rinse and repeat cycle here. That could continue for a little while. Interesting uh, uh, features there on the graph, but this is all showing inflation, vertical displacement there across the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. All right, uh, what else we got? Space weather activity today. We've got uh, an increasing chance here for some flares, not due to any uh, direct Earth-facing side sunspots, but we do have a massive area out there on the northeastern limb of the sun just coming into view. That could be a dandy of a sunspot. Hard to tell exactly how complex it is. Got to watch this area back over here. Looks like there's a little trail leading off of it, but that's a huge one. And uh, we'll have to watch that as uh, it comes into a more Earth-directed view in the coming days. It's definitely throwing off some sea flare activity, and it's pretty bright there on the UV image of the sun. So overall flare threat increasing slightly, 5% chance for X-flare. Um, I bumped up my M-flare up to about, uh, well, I think, 45 50% due to the... Uh, well, due to this newer sunspot there, 3976 coming into view... No major roars there in the forecast, as noted. Not a whole lot happening right now. Looks like a little increasing uh, aurora activity in the last hour or so, but uh, really not expecting much out there. As far as the next close approach asteroids here, from the NASA.gov website, a 23-foot bus size asteroid coming within about 500,000 miles of the planet. That's close, but a relatively safe distance. Here's a little bit bigger one, a little bit further distance as well. Um, that's coming in today. Over the next couple days there, some big ones. And uh, But if you look here, these are all millions of miles away from the planet. So that is good news for us. Taking a look here at the Storm Prediction Center. Severe weather outlook. Current day outlook 3 coming into view. That uh, Looking like a pretty good setup there for some severe weather as we head into Thursday and Friday. Oops, hold on a second here. Let's get out of there. Uh, right now, they have uh, you know a slight risk out here for some decent severe weather. That's due to the low pressure that's been over Southern California here recently, bringing them rain. That's going to scoot eastward, interact with the warmer, moist air, and high dew points out there for a severe weather event. So you can see coming in on Thursday and Friday across this area. Uh, following that, uh, Northern California gets back to the rainfall, thankfully, there this weekend and into early next week. That, uh, and I'm hoping that's not going to be the only storm system. This is a ways out here, but it looks like we will get a return of some wet weather out here across California. Um, so I'll take it. Not a not a huge rainmaker, but we'll get any. We'll take anything we can get right now. We're we're uh, pretty dry out here. It's got not not good. 
And uh, let me check up there across the Yellowstone. I wanted to see if we got anything going on with wind or snow out there. I don't see anything showing up on radar uh, as far as the wind patterns out here. It looks pretty light across that area. So hard to say exactly what that is. I don't think it's earthquake activity. If it is, it's very spiky but again it could be just blowing i mean I, just ice up there in general i know it's pretty cold up lit up there let me see here real quick yeah i got some cold temperatures so that may just be ice out there those are uh, this area is famous for producing those ice quake readings on the seismograph stations so Not super cold, a little chilly. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a good uh, Tuesday. Got quite a bit on the plate here, as I mentioned uh, last night, starting up the spring semester here at the college in Northern California. Got a pretty busy um, book load, so to speak. But uh, we'll continue to do these updates. A little bit of uh, earthquake activity there in Southern California right now, China Lake little seismograph station there showing a spike also showing up on Barrett looks like so let's see what we got before we back out of here uh, it's not showing up yet on the uh, graph but there's definitely a, a little earthquake showing up China Lake station sits over here around Ridgecrest the Barrett station sits down around here outside of San Diego area so distance but uh, there's a little spike showing up all right, folks, uh, I'm out of here. Of course, we'll be monitoring activity. Anything big takes place, we'll jump back on here and get an update in. But for now, have a good Tuesday. Keep an eye on New Zealand. Definitely a, a noteworthy uh, event taking place out here. Have a good one.